Hey folks, today is Friday, March 15th, 2024. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Uh, pardon the setup, the sound, the visual quality might not be the best. I'm currently traveling. You might ask, are you traveling to finally find a haircut? No, I'm not. I should be, yes, but uh, there's too many video games to play. So let's just jump into the first story, man. Uh, it's about Battlefront. This hurts. Why, once again, is Battlefront a big headline failure? So this time it's with the Battlefront Classic Collection. We talked about it a week or so ago. Uh, it's a re-release for 35-ish US dollars on uh, PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Uh, that is a collection and a little bit of an update of the classic Battlefront games. The really, really awesome ones that a lot of us, a lot of people from my age group and around have a lot of nostalgia for. It was going to come back, bringing a little bit of extra content, collecting the two games, the visuals, uh, and online multiplayer, and I was so excited to get back from this trip I'm currently on and fire it up and do some galactic conquests or heroes and villains or something like that, and it seems like so far the launch has been a bit of a disaster. Now, that's a strong word, but I'm going off of, because I haven't played it yet, but going off of just accounts, you scroll through social media, uh, Steam user reviews, man, it's not looking great. Uh, Steam reviews are overwhelmingly negative with the report that the game is like 64 gigabytes to download, which is wild, but also uh, that there were only a small handful of servers on PC, th like three servers to fit the influx of people and no one was able to get on, of course. Along with that, bugs and glitches ac across the platforms. I have seen reports of weird glitches and things keeping people from playing on the other platforms as well. Like, it's just... <sighs> this deserved love. It's kind of like the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy collection where it's just like, this is such a fabled story thing in gaming. And it didn't get the attention, the love in the oven it really deserves. It's from Aspire, the people who usually do good Star Wars games re-releases. I don't know what the idea was here, uh, you know, the glitches and all that stuff is bad, but the server stuff, with it just not being ready for people to play, what were they expecting? I mean, did they think that they were just going to release another little Star Wars re-release? You know, some of their re-releases don't get like a, a massive influx of traction or anything like that, like, you know, the Pod Racer re-releases or something like that, but this is Battlefront, and this very quickly people were very amped up about. It's a shame that this continues to be a thing, and especially now with older games that we love. Uh, Aspire did put out a statement though. It says, at launch we experienced critical errors with our network infrastructure. The result was incredibly high ping, matchmaking errors, crashes, and servers were not appearing in the browser. Yes. Since the launch, we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability, and we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilized to prevent further outages. Missed opportunity to say we shall double our efforts. Sorry, annoying Star Wars fan there. Yes, let's see how this goes. As of right now, I am not buying it until it seems like things clean up, but if you want to judge for yourself, go take a look online. Next story is actually like the briefest little mention of Fallout 5 that we thought people would maybe find interesting. So uh, this comes from all the press tours and the interviews going on with the Amazon Fallout television show. Uh, we talked about that new trailer last week and it seems like it might actually be good, but we don't wanna, we don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. You know how these things go. But uh, in some interviews like Todd Howard, who was executive producing, uh, Jonathan Nolan, who was heading up the series, he did uh, Westworld as well, and some other folks did go on record about how this show sits in relation to the games. The interview's really good. I'll link it in the description down below, uh, but just to paraphrase some of the interesting snippets, uh, Jonathan Nolan says, our series sits in relation to the games as the games sit in relation to each other. It's almost like we're Fallout 5. I don't want to sound presumptuous, but it's just a non-interactive version of it, right? Then later on, Den of Geek kind of like followed up with that quote saying like, hey, what does that mean? Fans are like, what, what's going on here? And he did clarify saying it would be presumptuous to say that the show is just automatically on the caliber of the games and also the fact that they wanted to tell an original story within the Fallout world. So there's that. But Nolan and one other person behind the show did say, I think we made Fallout 6. We know all about Fallout 5 and we're not telling anyone. And apparently Fallout 5 is very much a thing and Todd Howard has the ideas for it uh, because he said, and I quote, there were some things where I said, uh, don't do this because we're gonna do that in Fallout 5. Not much to go on, but I guess apparently there is a plan in place. It seems like that's gonna be so far away from now, but at the very least, we'll be seeing this show soon and judging for ourselves. Hey, now before we keep going, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. It's Vessi. <laughs> if you're new here, uh, we've been working with Vessi for years now because they just provide 
quality, dependable footwear that's actually comfortable. And in case you haven't heard, all of Vessi's stuff, all their kicks are 100% waterproof. But they don't feel like a waterproof shoe. They look stylish. They have a bunch of different colors, shapes, sizes for every type of person and application. Uh, and most recently, we've really been digging the Stormburst. This is an interesting shoe because it's one of their more rugged ones, but it still feels just as comfortable. Uh, personally, I throw these on when I know I'm going on a little hike, you know, leaving the city, uh, you know, go check out, you know, some of the rocky coasts, the shorelines around here are going upstate, up into the woods. There's always plenty of surprises. And rocking a pair of Stormburst, like you don't have to be afraid of anything. You can step wherever you want, do whatever you want. Your feet aren't gonna get soaked. But thanks to the material, your feet feel cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So it just really works out. Spring is here, so consider upgrading your adventure wardrobe with a pair of Vessi Stormburst shoes. All you gotta do is head to Vessi.com slash game ranks. Get your pair today to score an automatic 15% off your purchase at checkout. Again, that's Vessi.com slash game ranks. Go check them out. It helps out this show. And big thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Oh man, next up is Knights of the Old Republic. We actually are hearing something again about the Knights of the Old Republic remake. I didn't expect this, but this comes from Embracer Group selling Saber Interactive. We talked about like the rumor of this a couple weeks back, you know, amidst all the layoffs and studio closures and stuff, Embracer, uh, well, Saber is actually managing to escape from the clutches of Embracer Group who has mismanaged so many IPs, game development studios, stuff like that. They have officially been sold to the tune for $247 million. Now with Saber, who was ap apparently kind of working on Knights of the Old Republic, also with Aspire under Embracer, uh, the, the question is what's going on with Knights of the Old Republic? For a long time, I thought it was pretty much canceled, but apparently Knights of the Old Republic is somewhat going with Saber Interactive and it's going to be like a, a joint ownership thing. Like they, they broke up with their girlfriend, but the girlfriend still gets the dog some of the time, or at least some of the profits probably. Everybody wants a piece of that Star Wars pie. So Embracer did say, and I quote, it retained its assets, including two joint projects with the buyer, and everybody speculating online, uh, specifically Jason Schreier, who has some knowledge, of course, as a journalist, uh, that that is going to be KOTOR. Embracer CEO also did acknowledge that it's going to be a long time until we actually see KOTOR remake. While not naming the game outright, it's, it's pretty much assumed. And he said, and I quote, I think that kind of game needs some deep love and respect. So without giving full color, I think it's some time left until that is released. This is something that has been stuck in development hell forever, dude. I mean, I had heard about Knights of the Old Republic uh, being shopped around as a thing for years and years and just never really thought it was ever true or going to be a thing and then in 2021 we got that an official announcement of the Knights of the Old Republic remake and that's really been it man so I'm still not holding my breath maybe something will come eventually but there's always the old one to go back and replay. I've replayed it quite a few times. Don't be a baby. It's definitely aged kind of poorly, but it's still cool to play. Next up, Warner Brothers has done a bunch of dumb crap lately, but at the very least, here's a win, maybe for me personally, uh, they're bringing back multiverses. I actually really like this when this released as kind of like a like a test or a beta or what I don't remember what it was but uh, it was pretty cool and then it went completely dark and was delisted. Apparently they've taken player feedback, fine-tuned things and also now the game is running in Unreal Engine 5 and it's releasing May 28th as a full-fledged thing. It's gonna have a PVE mode and a couple of other different things and I'm really excited to jump back into this because I think the Smash clones are kind of funny and this one just did some interesting creative things plus i like a lot of the characters they're working with it's, it's not i don't get to like hang out with bugs bunny anymore so if he's in a video game i'm gonna go for it and if i can make batman punch him in the face and even cooler it's always dicey though because i mean it was a beta people had bought things in the microtransactions for it and then it was gone for a while like warner brothers does mess around so i don't know how invested you should get into this one like go pro or anything like that but for a good fun time I'm gonna be checking it out and maybe we'll do it before you buy again. I, I don't know. There's always so many games releasing. We only have so much time, so we'll just have to wait and see. Also, check this out. This is another thing I really wanna go home and fire up and check out, but shout out to a lot of YouTubers like Susie the Sphere Hunter and a, and a bunch of other uh, residents of Evil who have checked this out. This is RE22R, like a mod for fixed camera angles. This is Resident Evil 2 Remake with the Resident Evil 2 original fixed camera angle experience. Uh, and you can use tank controls, like you can use a D-pad. And this is extremely cool. The amount of work something like this takes is really impressive and should be applauded. 
And uh, I just, I love this so much. People dunk on me when I defend tank controls and fixed camera angles, but I present you this. People made this because they love this and people are, wa are wanting to play this and check this out because that style of game and gameplay is still cool. It's on Nexus mods, so I will link that in the description down below. Next up, some cool trailers I wanted to link. Uh, the first is the System Shock remake is coming to PlayStation 5. And uh, it's got a nice new flashy trailer if you want to check that out. Also, uh, check this out. It's called Nobody Wants to Die. You're this noir detective in a futuristic kind of cyberpunky New York City in 2329. And this thing is apparently releasing on PC, Xbox, and PS5 in 2024. Uh, this looks crazy. Uh, this seems like more of a concept kind of pre-rendered thing, uh, but the visuals, the ideas on display, uh, the blending of different styles and time periods is really cool. This is my type of thing straight up, but this trailer does look too good to be true. Apparently it is a first person game. Uh, you can check out the Steam page, like if you want a wish list or anything or look into the developer, not too much really to glean there, but it's an awesome trailer. It does kind of remind me of like the old days, like when like a new Unreal Engine thing would release and it would show like a cool guy in the future, like doing stuff and the graphics were so good that you were like, that's never gonna be in a video game. <laughs> that's what we're like at with this trailer. Also, uh, I didn't think they could top Brian Cox narrating and doing tech and lore specifically for promoting the game, but Capcom has tried to top it with Ian McShane. They got literal Ian McShane reading Dragon's Dogma 2 lore and explaining the game. That's cool marketing if you want to check that out. That's also linked below. Now, uh, something interesting is uh, new studios are popping up. As much as layoffs are happening, it means talent and developers and people are going out elsewhere and looking for jobs or getting together and forming new ambitious studios. And the newest one is from Stig Asmussen, one of the leaders behind Respawn. He's the director of God of War 3, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and uh, Jedi Survivor. So that's quite a pedigree. Uh, he's formed a new AAA studio to make, and I quote, a narrow driven single player action adventure game my type of thing this studio is called giant skull it seems like they're still just beefing up staffing up so it's going to be a while before we actually see anything from it but if you're looking for something far off in the horizon there's this all we can do is wish them the best hope they make a cool game now uh, one thing I did want to highlight is uh, from the insomniac leaks and the Sony leaks uh, something cool came and really bubbled up this is a uh, internal concept for a multiplayer Spider-Man game that apparently now we're not getting, they never really moved forward with it, but it was called Spider-Man The Great Web. I can't show it on screen. I don't wanna get like sued or anything because this stuff is technically like stolen materials. Of course, you remember it was like a ransomware attack, like hack attack on Insomniac. It was rough stuff. So I can't show it, but damn, this was a cool concept trailer. It gave people really what they want, especially people obsessed with like the Spider-Verse movies and shit. Like you're, you're uh, flying around as Spidey, Miles, possibly Miguel, uh, possibly a spider Gwen in this Insomniac universe and, and swinging around the city, jumping through portals, uh, fighting off against it's like a new reskinned Sinister Six and engaging in combat together. And the trailer is just really well done. Even as an internal trailer, someone really worked hard on it and it's really cool. You can find it out there. Uh, but you know, you're gonna probably get your hopes worked up. So I would say don't don't risk it. Still, it's just a glimpse of what could have been. There are so many things that are left on the cutting room floor of video game studios that never see the light of day. There's so many things out there that we could have had that we don't even know about. So to get a glimpse of something that we could have had and now we're aware of it, it does hurt more. But still, it was cool to share. That is the news this week though. Uh, I gotta get back to work here, but let me know in the comments what you think about everything going on, right? From Battlefront, did you jump into this new collection? Did did you plunk down 35 or so bucks for it? Are you looking forward to the Fallout show, uh, necessarily Fallout 5? Do you think we're really gonna see that anytime soon? Are you are you over and done with Fallout? Are you burnt on Bethesda? Where are you at? Are you gonna play that Resident Evil 2 remastered uh, like classic mode, that mod? What are you playing this weekend? Of course, let us know that as well. We'll have a pinned comment. If you just drop what you're playing in that pinned comment, that thread, that helps for research for our video. So thank you. But. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, social media, at Jake Baldino, if you want to yell at me directly. But clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. We are here every Friday for you guys. But that's really it. I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me. Have a great weekend. Be safe. All right?